Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome to London Conquer, an event that markets itself as a garden party with cars. So let's go around and take a look. As it's a Conquer event, I'm also going to try and decide which I think is best of the show and you guys can also give your opinions down below. Starting off we've got this Porsche 959, a stunning car, a technological tour de force in many ways. It paved the way for the modern supercar, it was four wheel drive, adjustable suspension, lots of electronics. What a way to start the show. Lamborghini are celebrating 60 years and the show is also celebrating that anniversary. So let's walk around quickly and show you the cars that it got on display. First you've got the Lamborghini Miura S. The Isolero, a GT car, which is what Lamborghini first started off doing. Next one is an Aventador S. The original Murcielago looking stunning in black. Lamborghini Countach, the car that for me defines Lamborghini. And this one belongs to Harry Metcalf. We've got a Diablo SV. This is an early car, as you can see, it's got pop-up headlights. These cars are extremely rare. I think they made around 150. And in the mid 90s, people don't realize that Lamborghini were producing around 150 to 200 cars a year. Each car was handmade. And from what I've read, they took thousands of hours to make each one. So they need to be appreciated. And they are starting now. People are starting now to appreciate them, but they're still not on the level where they should be. One of the things I like about early Diablos is that you got the signature of Marcello Gandini as a plaque on the side of the car. Next to the Diablo SV you got a 400 GT. These were bodied by Touring. Touring are actually really interesting because even the very first Ferrari was also designed by Touring. Contrasting to the 400 GT you got this LM002. This came with the Countach engine and what a machine it is. Again, an extremely rare car. Here's a car that I've never even heard about, a Ferrari Testarossa with a Targa top. Now Ferrari themselves never did a Targa top Testarossa and they only made one Spider as well. That Spider was made for Gianni Agnelli but aftermarket companies like Scuderia Baldini converted quite a few Testarossas to full Spider spec but I've never seen a, a Targa one. What do you think? So by the looks of it the Targa top is split in two parts. This is an early Testarossa, you can see that by the knockoff wheels as well as the monospecchio mirror on the A-pillar. Here we've got a Porsche Carrera GT Zagato. A car that I don't really get because visually speaking it's not that much different than the standard car. I mean there are obviously small differences but if you're going to spend millions of pounds or a huge amount of money, I don't know how much it actually costs to have a Zagato body car, I would want it to be quite different. The McLaren Senna GTR. The Senna is a car that I do not like, but in GTR form, I think it works. And this one has been converted for road use by Lazante. But the rear wing, I mean, that is hilarious. I mean, just look at the side of that. This for me is the car of the show. This is a Concours event and of course that means it's a competition and this Porsche 962 by Chopin is the winner hands down. The 962 was an extremely successful race car if you don't know anything about it at Le Mans and Chopin decided to build 
a road going version in collaboration with Porsche so this is not just some sort of aftermarket thing that they bits and pieces are put together Porsche was involved with the production of this car and what a machine from what I understand it produces 600 brake horsepower and ha is capable of doing over 230 miles an hour this is a pure race car for the road just look at the side intakes a person could crawl through that also continue the race theme the suspension is actually bolted onto the gearbox the race car theme continues on the interior look where the gear lever is and there's virtually no space inside the cabin they only made six of these road going 962 this is the CR version and it's only one of two made so it's no wonder that is literally stole the show I mean just look at that will you award this one this week the McLaren P1 in my opinion this represents peak McLaren along with the 675 LT since then it's been all downhill those of you with eagle eyes would have spotted that this P1 is actually finished in purple carbon continuing the Concorde theme of which is the best car I mean look at this Mercedes 300 SL gun wing finished with a red interior the perfect spec in my opinion and what a story behind this car I mean these were basically the car of the 50s and no wonder the price of these are million pounds plus there's an alloy version of this car they made about 29 those are probably twice the price of a standard car for my American viewers we got a Chevrolet Corvette split window don't really know much about these cars but they look pretty cool here we've got a Bitsuni 5300 GT now if you don't know the background to this car Bitsuni used to work for a Ferrari and he was behind cars like the Ferrari 250 GTO but eventually in what was referred to as a palace rebellion he left and decided to go into business for himself and this is what he came out with and as we're celebrating 60 years of Lamborghini as a show there is also a bit serene connection with Lamborghini he actually designed the very first V12 Lamborghini engine and apparently it was so powerful they had to detune the engine basically it was like a race car engine so it wasn't road worthy but that engine ran from the 350 GT right through to the Mercia logo I got a Rolls Royce Phantom here finished in what looks like a fireball paint job which I don't really get I mean do you guys get it the Ferrari F12 TDF truly one of the great modern Ferraris however this has very little in common with the original F12 only two of the body panels actually are similar or the same as the original F12 the A pillar and the doors the rest of the car is entirely new the Ferrari 575 Super America a car that I think is still underrated even within Ferrari circles which is a bit of a shame because it's a front engine classic looking Ferrari I talked about Pete McLaren earlier and this is the second of the, the cars that I think represented the, the best period of McLaren the 675 LT Here we have one of my favorite Bentleys of all time, the Continental SC. They made around 30 of these cars, and the SC is basically a Continental with a Targo top. How cool does it look? I think this Plymouth wins the prize for the car with the biggest wing at the show. Just look at it. Ferrari 365 GT4 2 plus 2. What do you think of it, guys? A lot of people make fun out of this car but Enzo used to drive one it was his daily so that's got to count for something
Here's something unusual, a 1929 Rolls Royce bulk tail. How's that spot to put your luggage? Extremely rare Ferrari Dino, a 206 variant, which I think they only made a few hundred of these, maybe even less than that. And this one's even rarer because it's right hand drive. Thank you everybody for being part of it. Enjoy the rest of the day. We'll see you at 24. I'm going to end the vlog right here guys, next to this Porsche 962 CR, I think it's the star of the show, let me know what you think is the star of the show down below in the comments and I'll see you next time, bye.